we have the will, we have the organization, and we have the global scientific talent to sequence eukaryotic life, in fact, all life. And we must do it because the reasons for doing so have never been more compelling. One of the main constraints faced by biologists in understanding life on Earth is that we still know very little about the web of interactions that contribute to stable and functional ecosystems. At the core of Earth's ecosystems are the millions of species that have resulted from three and a half billion years of evolution of life on our planet. Of the estimated 12 to 15 million eukaryotic species, that call Earth home. Only 1.8 million have been taxonomically named. For most species that have been classified using classical Linnaean taxonomy or by using the tools of molecular phylogenetics, very, very little is known, save for our own species and the species that feed us or cause us harm. It will be surprising to many of you that 20 years after the human genome was sequenced, of the 1.8 million known species that have been described, less than half a percent have had their genome sequenced. Thus, there are vast worlds of genomic diversity yet to be discovered. If we think of the power that genomics has brought to biology, to agriculture, and to human and animal medicine, just imagine what can be learned and what can be gained from sequencing the remaining 99.5% of eukaryotic biodiversity. At the same time, we want to better understand life on Earth. Species are rapidly dis disappearing due to habitat destruction, climate change, invasive species, pollution, and other anthropogenic factors. We are now at the beginning of what is believed to be sixth mass extinction event of life on Earth where the species extinction rate may be up to 100 times greater than background rates as determined from the geological record. And it is projected that 1 million species, that's right, 1 million species could become extinct by the end of the century if nothing is done to reverse current trends. With every species extinction, hundreds of millions of years of evolutionary history written in their genomes, will be erased unless we make some effort to preserve them. When we look at sequenced life, we find a great disparity in the kinds of organisms that have been sequenced. Since the beginning of the Human Genome Project, there's been a parallel focus on sequencing plants and animals that can be eaten, provide us our nutrition, organisms that cause or can be models of human diseases, and other organisms that are broadly useful, mainly to our own species. So therefore, it is no surprise that half of all sequenced organisms are in the animal kingdom, and most of the rest are plants and fungi. Relatively few are from the other large polyphyletic groups of very small organisms that live in the soils and in the oceans, of which comparatively little is known. So if you look on the right, although the most species sequenced are from the animal kingdom, the animals that have been sequenced represent just over 0.1% of the known number of animal species. Similarly, for plants, of the more than 370,000 named species of plants, less than 1% have been sequenced. We have barely scratched the surface in the study of the genomes of life on Earth, and we truly do not know what we do not know. And even if we consider the most threatened species that may soon disappear from our planet, mostly due to the impact of humans, less than 1% of those endangered species have been sequenced. In a sense, we are trying to prevent a hurricane by staring blindly into the wind. And I'm sorry to be a bearer of additional concerning news, but among those 0.43% unique species with sequenced genomes, the quality of most of those assemblies is very poor, with only 9% of the 
of sufficient quality for comprehensive genomic, functional, and evolutionary analysis. The rest of the genomes outside that box are highly fragmented, missing many genes and non-coding regulatory regions, making their scientific and practical utility more limited. So starting about eight years ago, when there were about a third the number of sequenced genomes as there are today, a group of scientists organized by myself, Gene Robinson at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and John Kress at the Smithsonian, began to explore the question of whether it was possible to sequence all eukaryotic life, and what would be the reason for doing so, and what might it cost? In 2018, we published a perspective in which we proposed sequencing of all known eukaryotic life and presented the rationale, strategies, goals, and a roadmap for doing so. We called this the Earth Biogenome Project. The project officially launched in London at the Wellcome Trust in October of 2018. And since then, the Earth Biogenome Project has grown to become one of the largest research collaborations in biology's history. So what then is the Earth Biogenome Project? The EBP is a confederated international network of networks that has the common goal of sequencing and annotating the genomes of all one and a half million or 1.8 million now known species of eukaryotes in a 10 year time frame, a grand challenge. The EBP network of networks now consists of 42 institutional members that have signed the Memorandum of Understanding and 43 affiliated projects with more than 5,000 participants in 18 countries around the world that conduct DNA sequencing and genomic research on all eukaryotic taxa. All continents then except for Africa and Antarctica are represented, but we anticipate adding several African nodes this year, and possibly Antarctica as well. The EBP is open to any institution or large-scale genome project that would like to participate. All member organizations and affiliated projects are committed to open public access of DNA sequence information through public domain databases, as well as compliance with the Convention on Biological Diversity and the Nagoya Protocols on Access and Benefit Share. The Earth Biogenome Project Roadmap calls for sequencing eukaryotic life in three phases, with the official starting uh, first year of sequencing actually starting this year in 2021. The main sequencing strategy takes a phylogenetic approach. Phase one, the first three years of the project, calls for reference genomes uh, to be produced for one representative of each eukaryotic family, about 9,400 species in all. Phase two or years four through seven calls for the high quality draft assemblies of a representative of each genus. And phase three, years th eight through 10, calls for sequencing all remaining species or about 1.84 million species total, up about 340,000 newly described species from the 1.5 million original estimate in our 2018 paper. And now let's just take a brief look at some of the well-funded affiliated projects that make up the Earth Biogenome Project. First up here on this slide is the Tree of Life program directed by Mark Blackster at the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute. The Tree of Life's main program, the Darwin Tree of Life, plans to sequence most known eukaryotic biodiversity in Britain and Ireland, about 60,000 species in all. And much progress has been made with 71 genomes submitted in the 2020 pilot phase and 1,500 reference genomes planned for completion in 2021. Another large project is the 10KP, which is directed by Xin Lu at BGI in Shenzhen, China. This project aims to sequence 9,000 species of plants and algae, as well as several thousand photosynthetic and heterotrophic protists. This project has also made excellent progress in its pilot phase with 21 genomes put in the public domain in 2020 and many more on the way. 
A flagship EBP affiliated project is the California Conservation Genomic Project. Led by Brad Schaefer at the University of California, Los Angeles, this project will produce genomic resources that will aid in the development and the management plans for more than 200 endangered species in California. The project will produce 150 reference genomes and resequence 150 individuals of each species for population genomic studies that will inform species conservation management plans. This project is make, also making great progress with 70 re reference genomes currently in the production pipeline. And I can tell you about many more exciting EBP affiliated projects, but there's just simply not time for that today. So how well is EBP proceeding toward the phase one target of sequencing one reference genome for each taxonomic family? There are now genome assemblies for more than 1,500 taxonomic families, as shown on the right here, in GenBank on the left, I'm sorry, from all sources, both EBP and non-EBP. The number has more than doubled from 2017 to 2020. A bit less than half of those meet the EBP high quality draft criteria shown in the middle and about 286 or 19% meet the EBP reference quality standard. And if you're interested in what those quality standards are, you can visit the EBP website and you can read the standards committee's report. Owing to the advances in technology, a six order of magnitude reduction in the cost of sequencing and the excellent work of EBP affiliated projects around the world, such as the Vertebrate Genomes Project led by Eric Jarvis at Rockefeller University. The numbers of reference quality genomes has rapidly increased from 2018 to 2020 as shown on the far right with a strong start for 2021. If we consider only the EBP affiliated projects, 1,668 eukaryotic genomes have already been put in the public domain, of which 386 are reference quality, representing 326 of the approximately 9,400 eukaryotic taxonomic families. Now, there's still some double counting here that needs to be sorted out, but the take home message is that the vast majority of reference quality eukaryotic genome assemblies being submitted to the large public domain databases is now coming from EBP affiliated projects. And if the numbers expected for 2021 materialize, shown on the far right, with the completion of nearly 3000 additional reference genomes, the project will have met its first year goal and will be nearly one third of the way towards sequencing one representative of each eukaryotic family. A moonshot for biology has achieved liftoff. And so what will this project cost? Well, we estimate that the EBP, which includes sequencing, annotation, and ecosystems level studies, will cost 4.7 billion US dollars over a 10 year period. Well, that may sound like a lot, but not really. In inflation adjusted dollars, a $3 billion human genome project would cost nearly $5.8 billion today. You heard that right. The cost of sequencing all extant eukaryotic species can be done for less than the cost of sequencing the human genome in today's dollars. And it's really that astounding fact that is the main reason that the EBP is feasible. The value of EBP will likely be many times greater than the $1 trillion already returned to the US economy by the Human Genome Project. And the gains in scientific knowledge will be immeasurable. Now, meaning no disrespect to my colleagues in the physical sciences, I would argue that the practical gains for humanity and the benefits to the planet will be of equal, if not greater value to those returned by the $4.7 billion spent on the Hubble Space Telescope and the $13.2 billion spent on the Large Hadron Collider. 
This is indeed biology's moment for big science. So what will those returns be? In terms of knowledge gain, the EBP will define the phylogenetic relationships of all of life on Earth. It will illuminate the processes of evolution and elucidate the relationship between genotype and phenotype, the so-called rules of life. The EBP will provide the genomic tools and resources for the conservation of biodiversity and the restoration of damaged ecosystems. As recently shown by the Zoonomia Consortium, of which I'm a proud member myself, even the genome sequence of a single individual may be used to determine the threat of extinction. The figure on the slide shows a clear relationship between threatened species status that is threatened in terms of the International Union for Conservation uh, for Nature's uh, definition and the levels of heterozygosity and stretches of homozygosity in the genome. Genomic sequences also provide foundation for understanding the genes that are necessary for the adaptation of plants, animals, and other eukaryotes that are important to the agricultural ecosystems of the world and to the biotechnology industry. This recent paper by Lavelle and co-workers described the recent sequencing and resequencing of 732 switchgrass genotypes across a wide geographical area and identified extensive genomic evidence for climate adaptations. Switchgrass is an important new bioenergy crop and the climate gene biomass associations that were found are of practical importance for breeding programs. And because biodiversity underpins all of ecosystem services, that is the services that are provided to us for free by nature, DNA sequencing of all eukaryotes will produce a foundation for understanding, for maintaining, and for enhancing ecosystems and the products and processes and cultural benefits that they produce. This will be absolutely critical in meeting the needs of the rapidly burgeoning human population that will reach 9.7 billion people by the year 2050. The ecosystem services create more than $600 billion in value annually to the bioeconomy of the United States and the European Union alone. The potential for unleashing the value of biodiversity has been recently estimated to be three to five trillion dollars per year annually by the McKinsey Global Institute. Thus, the EBP will generate the necessary scientific foundation for biotechnologies that are critical to the future parts of the bioeconomy that require DNA sequence information, such as synthetic biology. In that estimate is the discovery of new and resilient sources of genetic variation for agriculture and new medicines and biomaterials from nature. Currently, approximately 80% of the drugs used in the world were or are still being produced from natural sources. These drugs include many antibiotics, statins used to treat high cholesterol, anti-HIV medications, and novel cancer therapeutics. And finally, with our partners, such as the Global Virome Project and Bioscan, there's an opportunity to identify zoonotic infectious agents prior to them becoming pandemics using biosurveillance and through the principle of one health of all living things, as exemplified by this recent study, which involved many EBP investigators. The study examined the structure and evolution of the ACE2 receptor in 410 vertebrate species. The ACE2 receptor is the main receptor that the SARS-CoV-2 virus uses to gain entry into human cells. And the critical resource, of course, for identifying the ACE2 orthologs was whole genome sequences for hundreds of vertebrates that were freely available in public domain databases. Without those genomes in the public domain, this work, which was completed in just four months after the pandemic began, would not have been possible. The analysis of the receptor allowed us to propose possible intermediate hosts 
for the virus before it entered the human population. Most of these predictions have turned out to be correct, demonstrating the potential of SARS-CoV-2 to spill over into wild and captive pet animals, which can then serve as potential reservoirs for spillback to humans. So both important consequences for animal health and human health, once again, demonstrating and illustrating in a very clear way, the interconnectedness of all life on earth. Well, Sisyphus, depicted here by Mark Chagall, received the in eternal punishment for ever rolling a boulder up a hill in the depths of Hades. And like Sisyphus, we faced huge challenges in accomplishing a moonshot for biology, such as the acquisition of tens and hundreds of thousands of vouchered samples for DNA sequencing and for the non-trivial issue of funding. Fortunately, the technology already exists to accomplish our goal and continues to improve. We have the technology, we have the will, we have the organization, and we have the global scientific talent to sequence eukaryotic life, in fact, all life. And we must do it because the reasons for doing so have never been more compelling. We must leave no species behind because as Ed Wilson has said, every scrap of biodiversity is priceless. Indeed, each species represents some small but important part of the collective wisdom of three and a half billion years of the evolution of life on earth. And as David Attenborough has recently warned us, we must act now because extinction is forever. So now, now is the time to go out and collect your favorite organism and go forth in sequence because your life may depend on it. I wanna thank all of the leaders of the Earth Biogenome Project from around the world, and in particular, my EBP co-founders, Gene Robinson and John Press, and the many serving on committees like all of you. We have survived and prospered uh, using Zoom, so I also acknowledge Zoom. And I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you, wherever you are, for attending and for participating. Thank you very much.